we have seen pressure groups fostered and appeased by presidents until they intimidate and paralyze the life of this nation. No man or no group of men have been elected by the people to have such power. If freedom is to live, we can no more have economic tyranny than we can have political tyranny. <laughs> Representative government has not been maintained today as the master in our house. Either we shall have a society based upon ordered liberty and the creative energy of free men, or we will have a dictated society.
I would just ask if I intended to enter politics. My reply was no. The only politics I have is contained in a simple phrase known well by all of you. God bless America. I have been requested to present to this great audience Mrs. Douglas MacArthur. I have no political aspirations whatsoever. I do not intend to run for any political office, and I hope that my name will never be used in a political way. May I add that this is not only my beloved wife, but my best soldier. <laughs>
the idea of a millionth of a second, instruments of bibli of time, if whether their calculations were right or wrong merely by watching a weapon go off. Look into to understand further the invisible world of the atom. There is effects on human life. Medical experiments are being run to learn what pressure, heat, and radiation does to living tissue. A nation gearing up to an effective civilian defense program must have all the answers. Facts about radiological medicine, detection devices, protective materials. As in the United States buildings to atomic attacks, so that adequate civil defense planning may be carried on. Station, a door is closed. Padlock. The single key put in the pocket of one man, head of the firing party. No one will have all wild tests which can affect...
in Europe, and indeed throughout the world, our foreign policy approach has been equally as vacillating and negative, and for the most part, sad indeed to relate under the domination of others. We have yielded to selfish pressures both at home and abroad, and in so doing, have unduly directed the distribution of our wealth into privileged channels, have taken sides in international endeavors, This, then, must be the direction of our foreign policy. We must, upon restoration of our military strength and spiritual balance, recklessly dissipated in our headlong retreat from victory, chart from that strength a true and unequivocal course to peace and tranquility, a peace and tranquility which will be real, not fictitious, deep-rooted, not superficial. Our ideal must be eventually the abolition of war. If the Soviet Union now wishes to reach concrete, realistic agreement, these can be realized within the United Nations. I wish again to invite the Soviet government to join us wholeheartedly on the United Nations road to peace. The Soviet government could show its will for peace not merely by words, but in deeds, by joining without reservation in carrying out the programs set forth in the United Nations resolutions which point the way to peace. The door is wide open to the Soviet Union to participate with the nations of the free world in making these resolutions effective. 